In this lesson, we want to review writing rational expressions in lowest terms, otherwise known as simplifying rational expressions. So before we jump in and start talking about how to simplify a rational expression, let's just quickly review the process with fractions. So if I wanted to simplify 5 twentieths, what could I do? Well, kind of the easiest way to do it the way that I do it right now, I eyeball these things and say, okay, what's the greatest common factor between 5 and 20? I know 5 is a prime number. I know 20 is 5 times 4, or 5 times 2 times 2. So I can just divide the numerator and denominator by 5, right, the GCF. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So it's 1 fourth. But the more technical approach to this would be to factor the numerator and denominator completely. So 5 doesn't factor. I'm just going to write it as 5. 20 would factor into what? It's 5 times 4, or 2 times 2. And then I would cancel any common factor that's not 1 between the numerator and denominator. So I'd cancel this 5 with this 5. Go ahead and write a 1 there. And I'd end up with 1 over 2 times 2, which is 4. So my simplified answer here is 1 fourth. Now we're going to use the same thought process when we simplify rational expressions. If I have something like 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 over 5x squared plus 20x, all I need to do is factor the numerator and denominator completely and then cancel any common factors. Now, before we begin, I want to make something absolutely clear. If you cancel things here, you got to understand that you can only cancel common factors. This is very, very common as a source of confusion. So if you have something like a multiplied by b over a, a and b here in the numerator are factors. They're multiplying each other. This can cancel with this, okay? I'm just left with b. So if I had something like 2 times 3 over 2, the 2s will cancel. I'm left with 3, okay? Very easy to understand that. Where students get confused is they have addition involved and they try to cancel. If you see something like 2 plus 3 over 2, you cannot cancel this, okay? Please don't do that. That's wrong. It's a very common mistake. You cancel common factors, okay? So this is wrong. So as an example, let's say you had something like x plus 5, this quantity, multiplied by x minus 1. These are factors. x plus 5 is a factor. x minus 1 is a factor. So this is a factor, and this is a factor. If this is over, x plus 5, this quantity times x minus 3. Again, this is a factor, and this is a factor. So I cancel common factors, right? This and this can be canceled. They are factors. They can be canceled. But if I had something like, let's say, x plus 5 plus 1 over, let's say, x plus 5 plus y or something like that, you see students try to cancel this and this. This is addition, this is addition. You can't cancel, okay? It's got to be canceling common factors, okay? That's what we're looking for. So please don't get confused between those two. Now, what am I going to do here? I'm just going to factor this numerator into the product of two binomials, and I'm going to factor the denominator into a monomial times a binomial, okay? And then I'm going to look to see if I can cancel anything. So for the numerator, I'm going to use reverse FOIL here because it'll be a little bit quicker because this guy right here is a prime number. 2x squared can only come from 2x times x. So this will be 2x times x. Now I just need to work out this 7x part, okay? To do that, I think about factors of negative 4. We've got 1 and negative 4 or negative 1 and 4, right? So 1 and negative 4 or negative 1 and 4. You also have 2 and negative 2, but that won't work. Why won't it work? Remember what we talked about in our lesson on reverse FOIL. If I put in a negative 2 here and a positive 2 here or reverse that, it doesn't matter. You would have a common factor of 2 here. There's no common factor of 2 in this guy. So this doesn't exist, right? This can't be possible. So we'll erase this and just focus on this scenario. Now, I have 7x. I know that that could come from 2x times 4, which would give me 8x. And then x times negative 1 would give me negative x. 8x minus x would be 7x. So I would want a 4 here, right, because I want 2x times 4. And I would want a minus 1 here because I want x times negative 1, right? So again, 8x 
minus x would give me 7x. So that's our factorization. All right, down here is very, very easy. We pull out the GCF, which is 5x. Inside the parentheses, we're left with x plus 4. Now, again, I can't stress this enough. This is multiplication. This is multiplication. The quantity 2x minus 1 is multiplied by the quantity x plus 4. These are factors. Okay, these are factors. And then these are factors. Okay, these are factors. So 5x is multiplied by the quantity x plus 4. We can cancel common factors. You have x plus 4, you have x plus 4. That can be canceled. Okay? So what am I left with after I cancel? I'm left with 2x minus 1 over 5x. Okay, so this is the simplified version. When you work with rational expressions, as we talked about in the last lesson, you deal with restricted values. You can't divide by zero. So any value that you replace the variable with that results in a denominator of zero has to be restricted from the domain. If I look at the simplified version here, if I plugged in a zero there, obviously five times zero would give me zero. So I would say x does not equal zero, but that's wrong. X can't equal zero, but X also can't equal negative four. And the reason X can't equal negative four is we have to think about this in terms of the original rational expression. With the original rational expression, if I factor the denominator, I have five X multiplied by the quantity X plus four. We know five X being set equal to zero would give me a result of X equals zero. So we've already restricted that. We found that we're done with that. This part right here, the X plus four that canceled, we lost that information. So x plus 4 equals 0. If I subtract 4 away from each side, I get x equals negative 4. So that's also a restricted value. x can also not be negative 4. So don't let that trip you up. When you're stating restricted values, always go with the original rational expression, not the simplified one, because the simplified one will lose information, okay? And you'll end up putting the wrong domain down. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have x squared minus 4x minus 12 over x squared minus four. So very easy to factor this guy. So for the top, I want two integers whose sum is negative four and whose product is negative 12. So this is x and this is x. For negative 12, I would immediately think about negative six and positive two, right? Negative six and positive two. And of course that would work out, right? Your outer would be two x and your inner would be minus six x. Negative 6x plus 2x would give me negative 4x, so that's good to go. For this guy, x squared minus 4, it's the difference of two squares. So we talked about this. This factors into x plus 2 times, you'd have x minus 2, right? Whatever squared here minus whatever squared here. This is basically x squared minus 2 squared. Okay, so that's how we get this. So I can cancel this with this. Right, x plus two in the denominator with x plus two in the numerator. Again, if you're thinking about the domain, think about it in terms of the original rational expression. If I write this as x minus six over x minus two, I've lost the information that this guy presents, right? Because here I know that x can't be negative two and I know that x can't be positive two. With this guy, I know that x just can't be two, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and write that x does not equal two or negative two. All right, let's take a look at another one. And this one's a little bit more tedious. So we have 21 X squared plus 123 X plus 90 over three X cubed plus 17 X squared plus 10 X. Now in the numerator, I am gonna pull out a three to start. That would give me seven X squared plus 41 X plus 30. And I'm just going to work on this for now. I'll come back to the denominator in a minute. So to factor the inside here, I'm going to go ahead and use reverse FOIL since 7 is a prime number. So 7x, and you'd have x over here. I'll put my 3 outside. So I need to figure out some factors of 30 here. So 30 factors into what? It's 6 times 5. 6 is 3 times 2. Okay, so I have some possibilities here. So to go through the possibilities, we have one times 30, we have two times 15, we have three times 10, we have five times six, and that's basically it. Now, one and 30 won't work, two and 15 won't work, three and 10 won't work, but five and six would work. 
7 times 5 is 35, and 6 plus 35 is going to give me 41, okay? So that's the factorization there. Let me erase this. I don't need that anymore. So let me see if I can squeeze this in here. Hopefully I can. 3 times the quantity 7x plus 6 times the quantity x plus 5. All right, for the denominator, I can pull out an x to start. That would give me 3x squared plus 17x plus 10. And then for this part right here, again, I'm going to use a reverse foil because this guy's prime. So 3x and x, that's the only way you can get 3x squared. So I need to figure out how to get a middle term of 17x. And the factors of 10, you've got 1 times 10, you've got 2 times 5, and that's it, right? So if I want 17, I could multiply 3 times 5 and get 15. And I could multiply 2 times 1 and get 2. And 2 plus 15 would give me 17. So we would have x times the quantity 3x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 5. Okay. All right, let's drag this guy down here so we have a little room. So we can see that we have a common factor of x plus 5. Cancel this with this. And I'm left with 3 times the quantity 7x plus 6 over x times the quantity 3x plus 2. Now you can leave it in factored form just to show that there's nothing else that will cancel. That's very common. You could also distribute the 3 to each term here and the x to each term here. Both answers are valid. Now, in terms of the restricted values, you would have three of them, right? If you look at the original here, x can't be 0. So x cannot be 0, right? I got that from this x here. Just set x equal to 0. 3x plus 2, we would set that equal to 0 and solve. So this would be 3x is equal to negative 2. Divide each side by 3. You get x is equal to negative 2 thirds. So x can also not equal negative 2 thirds. And then lastly, you have x plus 5 here, which was canceled. Again, we lose that information in the simplified version. So x plus 5, if you set that equal to 0, we subtract 5 away from each side of the equation you get x equals negative 5. So x also can't be negative 5. So three restricted values there. You have 0 that can't be in the domain, negative 2 thirds, and also negative 5. All right, for the last problem, we're going to look at one that's a little bit challenging. So we have 2x squared minus 9x minus 35 over 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 6x plus 7. So let's start by just factoring the numerator. So I'm going to use reverse FOIL here. This guy is prime, so it's going to be pretty easy. And I want to get a correct middle term of negative 9x. So I know that for 35, forget about the fact that it's negative, it's going to be 1 times 35 or 5 times 7. So I know 1 and 35 will not work, but 5 and 7 would work if I put a minus 7 and a plus 5. Because the outer term here, 2x times negative 7, would be negative 14x. And the inner term here, 5 times x, would be plus 5x. If you combine those, you would get negative 9x, okay? So that's what we're looking for there. Now, this is a four-term polynomial down here. This 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 6x plus 7. Pause the video and see if you can factor that using grouping. So hopefully you gave that a shot, and you'll notice that no matter what you do, you cannot factor this using grouping. Most people would just throw in the towel here and just say, okay, it can't be simplified. But you need to think a little bit deeper here. This is a very common problem as you get into more advanced courses. You'll be given stuff that doesn't factor using traditional methods. So we have to think about something else. If I have 6 times 3, and this gives me 18, well, I know 3 and 6 are factors of 18. 3 and 6 are also divisors of 18, meaning if I divided 18 by 3, I get 6. If I divided 18 by 6, I get 3. So hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. If we can simplify here, then it must be true that this guy would factor into something that has one of these, right? So this could be a factor or this could be a factor. If neither of them is a factor, then we can't simplify. So all I actually have to do is do some division, right? I could do polynomial long division, or in this case right here, if this turns out to be a factor, we can use synthetic division. So we're going to start out with that because synthetic division is pretty quick. So this is in the format of 1x to the first power minus some number. So if in that format, just grab the number. So 7 is going to go out here. 
just like I taught you in the review session, we're going to take the coefficients only. So my 2, my negative 15, my 6, and my 7. Okay? Let's put a little bar down here. Let me scroll down and get a little room. We'll come back up in a second. Drop down the first number. So this goes here. 7 times 2 is 14. We add negative 15 plus 14 is negative 1. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. We add 6 plus negative 7 is negative 1. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. 7 plus negative 7 is 0. This is important here. We have no remainder. Okay, we have no remainder. So that means that x minus 7 is a factor of 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 6x plus 7. And we have our answer right here from the division. So we know that this would be x minus 7 times, you would have what? It's one degree less, so it would be 2x squared, 2x squared, and then minus x, and then minus 1, okay? And if you don't believe me, go ahead and multiply these two together, and you will see that you get this back, okay? Again, all we did, just to go through this again, because I know some people will get confused, this guy right here divided by this guy right here gives me this guy right here. So this guy times this guy gives me back to this guy. So we just factored it using division. Okay, that's all we did. Now, the question is, can I further factor this? Can I factor 2x squared minus x minus 1? So this would be 2x and this would be x. We have negative 1 here, so that's pretty simple. It's either plus 1 here minus 1 or the other way around. The outer here would be negative 2x, and the inner would be plus x. That's exactly what we want, right? So let's scooch this down. And let's slide this up. And we have successfully factored this guy as the quantity 2x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x minus 7. Now. We're going to go ahead and just cancel this with this, and we've simplified this guy. So it's 2x plus 5 over, you have the quantity 2x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 1. And again, we should leave this in factored form just to show that nothing else would cancel. If you want to look at the restricted values here, again, you go with the original one. This is in factored form, so if I was to set this equal to 0, right, the denominator, then I could just go through to each factor and solve that equation. So 2x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 away from each side, you get 2x is equal to negative 1. Divide each side by 2, you get x equals negative 1 half. So x cannot be negative 1 half. The other ones are easy, you can just solve them by inspection. You have x minus 1, if that was equal to 0, x would just be 1, right? So 1, and then this guy right here, which we canceled, x minus 7, if that was equal to 0, x would just be 7. So just to state our final answer here, we have this 2x plus 5 in the numerator over the quantity 2x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 1, and then our restricted values, again, thinking about the original rational expression, x cannot be negative 1 half, it cannot be 1, and it cannot be 7.